everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're here in Chicago in Wicker Park with Doug McBride at Gravity Studios. And Doug and I have been working together for, oh, six or seven months. And uh, he's had some 30, 40, 50 cycle problems in his room, which is typical in these smaller studios. And uh, he's had all kinds of treatment in there over the years. And uh, he was willing to try our carbon technology. So we started small. We started with four of our ACDA 10 units. We put them underneath his speakers. So between the, the floor and the speakers, we put the low frequency absorption yesterday. And we just did, uh, let's see, four, eight, 16 square feet. And most of you know from our past videos that we, we do require a little bit more than 16 square feet, but this was a trial, it was a test. And Doug's gonna tell us a little bit about some of the differences he heard and, and some of the changes in, in the room that the carbon technology made. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty impressive, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty surprised. Um, I've been working every day, more or less, in this control room. We have two studios, but this is the one I spend a little bit more time in. And I've been in this room for 24 years, um, which is more, it's exactly half my life. <laughs> and so I know this room really well. Um, and we, yeah, we've tried a, a variety of different products from different companies and different approaches and uh, and they, uh, each of them had been just a little better than the last. And I was used to spending, you know, spending a few grand and getting 10% improvement, you know, and, and I, which was always a little disappointing, but you know, you're just glad you got some. But with these, uh, it was pretty remarkable. Um, Dennis put one up and I noticed the difference immediately. And he put two up and it was just whoa and then by the time we got to four it, it transformed my listening environment i'm gonna have to grieve over the fact that i didn't have that clarity over the last 24 years but other than that uh i'm real happy for mixing from here on out um, um what the way it translates for me is that my my low end was ringing around the room to a certain uh, extent so now that uh, now it's really tight i hear the the, the bottom of my bass guitar, bottom of my kick drum, bottom of the vocal, very clearly. Whereas before there was some guesswork involved. You know, how, deep, how low does my kick drum go? I, I'm not really completely sure, but now I am. <laughs> so that's a pretty big deal. And uh, uh, I suspect it's gonna improve the quality of my mixes markedly. So I'm pretty excited. Well, good. And the thing about uh, these smaller rooms that we're all working in is that we're all working around some issue you know so first we have to identify the issue which is easy to do if you spend enough time in the room you you immediately know it's 30 40 50 cycles whatever the frequency range is and then you get used to it and then you you try to compensate for it but with the carbon technology we don't have to do that now the trick is finding the correct surface area coverage for the room size and volume and that takes time you know, we start small, we start little, and the engineer who works in the room will always tell you because he knows the sound of the room and any change in the room you'll be able to make. Let's talk a little bit about mids. Uh, any differences in the mids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm noticing, uh, what I'm noticing in the mids is, uh, it's uh, essentially, it's uh, I'm noticing more harshness. So, um, uh, I know how my speakers sound. I know how the room sounds. Um, but uh, I played a variety of material, stuff that I'd recorded but not mastered, stuff that was mastered, stuff I didn't work on at all, stuff from a multi-track session that still hasn't been mixed. And uh, with regard to the mid-range, uh, everything had an edge to it that was uh, a little bit, you know, I mean, all uh, a lot of this stuff, some people might consider subtle, but it's huge to me. And with regard and to, and to any engineer, and with regard to the mid range, uh, you know there was a, a an edginess uh, between one and four K that uh, there's, it was like there was an extra dB of EQ between one and four K on most instruments. And uh, uh, now I, I happen to be aware of the fact that I assumed this was true for everyone, but I almost never add over twenty four years. I almost never add. Uh, EQ between one and four K. I didn't know why. Now I think I know why. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing about uh, change then the low frequency dynamic of the room. When you change the low frequency dynamic of the room, errors are going to come out. You're going to hear things that you never heard before. And we're going to address those issues. 
So like we said in the beginning, step by step, inch by inch, get the low end managed correctly, and then we can work on the mids and highs. And we'll, we'll do that as we go down the road. So we'll, we'll keep you posted and uh, uh, we'll, we'll do some more videos with Gravity Studios and uh, you'll, you'll all be able to uh, identify and learn a little bit from it. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm glad we, we found your company and I'm psyched to hear where it goes from here. Great. All right. Well, thank you.